Sweet dreams are made of me. Hey guys, it's your girl A Shaky at Geek XX Shake, and we're back with another reaction to Titans. We are now at episode 12 already, guys. We're closing in on the finale. Feels like we're not ready. Based on what I said in the last episode and what I saw in the last episode, I don't feel like we're ready for a finale yet, at least not for what I would consider to be a finale, but we'll have to see what we get out of this episode. It is apparently called Faux Hawk. The way they spelt it, obviously, we're talking about the real Hawk, AKA Hank. We haven't seen him in a couple of episodes. The last time we saw him, he was fresh from his impetuous, but probably long time coming breakup with Dawn and it looked like he was going back to using drugs again. I don't want to prejudge the episode because honestly I'd say the last few episodes have actually been really really good but I just this what I didn't really like in the first season was how we would sometimes take these deviations on character journeys that I didn't feel really helped contribute to the plot that we were supposed to be following and considering we've got so much going on right now with Gar and Connor being captured and Dick, well, Dick at large at moment. Uh, <laughs> sorry, it just doesn't sound okay. And just Team Titans still being relatively scattered. I just don't feel like this is the right time for us to go on a deviation about Hawk's situation, AKA Hank's situation. I don't know, I just feel like this isn't the right time. I don't know. Again, I'm trying not to prejudge. I could be wrong. Maybe we're gonna get something that's really gonna roll into this plot or we're just gonna move things forward somehow or maybe Hank's gonna trigger something. I'm really hoping that's the case because if it's really just all kind of a canned episode about Hank, I'm not sure I'm going to feel about that right now. We're not going to know what this is about until we actually watch the episode. So without further ado, let's watch it. And as usual, we'll have some words afterwards. I'm okay? Let's go. Five years ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just a quick blade. Oh, wow. Jericho, you don't look good, man. He can't get out. Why? Why does he look like this? No! Blame me. The Titans lied to you. They took nope. advantage of you. Us. Well, yes, but they also told the truth. You jumped into me. You. Your choice. Yuck. You want to kill them because they exposed you. Mm-hmm. Show me who you really are. Yep. Oh, I've seen. You're a monster. Truth. Mm. Mm-mm. Mm -mm. That's right, Jericho. You screw him up. F him up. That's right. That's right. Talk smack to me. Hey. Is this real? Where have you been hiding? Dude. Yeah, no one would actually do that. Damn, is this real? Wow. Oh, mercy, I cannot wait to hurt you so bad. Relax, Matt. Oh! You did great. I hate her so bad. I hate her so bad. Wow. See, this is men. This is how little the little guy can get you into trouble. <laughs> Not that good, sir. <laughs> Could really use some backup on this. Hmm. Rachel, no Jason Whose fault's that? Hey! You're the guy that's from Killjoys. <laughs> you look ridiculous. Chain. There we go. Is it true that power plants make things grow bigger? Ugh. That was awful. Yeah, it is. Oh. 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 Oh.
You know you get no win. No. What's wrong, boo boo? Dick is in trouble. I saw it. Okay, then knock yourself out and dream up his exact location. Okay. Is he out here? I think. Nah. <laughs> Corey, you need to stalk somebody. Don't take it out on Rachel. You know better, girl. Someone has to make some adult decisions around here. No more running after Dick Grayson. Yes, mama. Space witch had a bad dream. Oh, I'm the space witch. Then what? Princess alien pink hair from planet Tamo, whatever. Tamarin. <laughs> Or? Do I? I'm sorry. I really am. You both should apologize. It's not your fault. It's mine. It's just... Better. We should go back to San Francisco. Yeah, Dick's a grown man. Looks like Gara really needs her help. He does. Oh, these two. Me making you lunch. And breakfast and dinner. You are trying to kill her then. That many hot dogs will definitely put you in the ground. Well, I don't know. You're very lucky, I guess. Really? I've been hit by a car. I've jumped off the science building and I've nosedived into a gravel pit without getting hurt. Okay, Claire from Heroes. You know Gary and I love you very much. Who's Gary? Gary. Who's Gary? Your real father. You're psycho! I hardly knew him. And yet? You produced a child. In my water, girl! You kinda aimed up. Beach cube will work. Oh, okay, just get another glass then. Well, this boy Todd of yours doesn't think you're a fraud. Oh, Todd is a no. Wait, Jason Todd. To I bought this house. Pay all your bills plus the club membership I always have. We can get out and ask your mother. Oh. Guys, I'm not familiar with this with this mask. Please tell me in the comments what this mask is. Ooh. You know, sometimes when your mama says you don't need to know your real daddy, you should just listen. I have a brother. Not anymore. Kill them. He was murdered. By me. Fighting. I'm gonna cut out your eye. Wait, whoa! Small print. You're too pretty anyway. Fuck you. I wish I could take it all back, but I can't. Yeah, I would think so. It hurt people. It was part of daddy's training to fuck me all the time. Damn, sir. Done with this shit. Look, none of this was supposed to happen. It just did. Oh, fuck off me. Oh. <sighs> fuck all you. Honey, you didn't actually think he wasn't gonna be mad, right? Right? Oh, someone should have laid your edges, girl. That's not a good lace front today. Great. My son. Back to me. What is it with this woman sending people on her? Okay. What exactly are you gonna do to help? Damn, dog. Oh, that was a dream. Damn. I feel like it's not far from reality, though. I'm assuming this is a front. Nobody wears handmade shoes anymore. Fruitcake is my life. My passion. Okay. I mean, if you don't like my work, I love your work. What is happening right now? That's why I can't. Would you like to put a match to this before you have a slice? Please. Oh. Eat the damn cake. I know. Eat the cake. Anna Mason, eat the cake. I need another one. Something different. Flame retardant, maybe? But why'd you waste the part of the good fruitcake dough? Max triple weave Kevlar shell, electrically insulated, and light sensitive. Speak on it, sis. Why? Wow. Oh, sir. Just a robe. Just a robe would have been okay. Oh, hey, dude. <laughs> <laughs> the fact that he made the same noise. <laughs> maybe it really is a bird. You held up a laundry bag. Yeah. What kind of message does that send? That I... Sorry, so wait, should I kill them? I killed them? Like, no, you stole my suit. No, I didn't steal it. You, you sold it to me. Remember, you, you, were, you were in the parking lot with that lady? You are so... You asked me, you asked me where I can... I... <laughs> yeah, get your... Wow, dude. That's a lot of drugs. Uh. 
Wow. You trying to die. Phase two's being rescheduled. Are we aborting? We're moving it up. Damn, poor Gar. I'm sorry, sweetie. God, they're gonna get Gar arrested or killed. So sad. This is so unfair. Green eyes. Yeah. Saw that coming. Once again! Justice for Gar! Alright guys, that was the latest episode of Titans, which was called Fohawk. And I am so glad I was wrong about this episode. I was really, really afraid that we were gonna get like a, a canned episode about Hawk, and I'm so glad we didn't go there. Not that I don't want to know more about Hank or Dawn. I was just like, you know, not that I'm saying Hank's not important or I don't want to see what's going on. I just, we didn't need, you know what I mean? I just didn't want us to take a complete diversion one episode before the finale into his background story and delving down his dark corners of, of emotion right now, right? So I know it sounds a bit cold, we ain't got time for that. I'm glad that this was a little bit of, you know, seeing where Hank has been the last couple of episodes, but we still had everything else in the storyline moving along. Now, I noticed someone in my comments mentioned what I said a few episodes back, that the pacing of this season has not necessarily been great. I would say it's probably my biggest critique of it so far is that really, we had 13 episodes and I don't know that they utilized them as well as I personally think they could have. Because in this episode, while we still got some really good moments, it felt rushed. It felt like, okay, a bunch of things are going into motion all of a sudden. And I feel like we could have really peppered a lot more of this earlier into the season. And again, if we were going to take diversions of storyline and really start to get to know characters, why we didn't take a whole episode to talk about Gar and his backstory is still beyond me. Corey still hasn't gotten her full just desserts, but she got more than Gar has so far. At least we know where Corey's from. We know what happened to her family. We know what's been going down. We have a little bit of her history. We got to meet someone from her past. None of that from Gar, outside of the Doom Patrol, which was last season. Like, this is ridiculous. We are one episode from the finale. And sadly, the finale is probably going to be the entire Titan team doing their best to take Gar down without killing him. And I mean, again, if Gar gets a few licks in, I'm not exactly going to be sad because Gar did take a full-on beatdown from them in the season premiere. But still, I don't... Ugh, this is so messy. I hate the fact that Gar is going to have so much so much trauma after this like he already has so much and his trauma now has its own trauma i am so mercy is the devil i really 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 hope something terrible happens to her sometime soon just you know some some hospitalization from a thorough beatdown from both or all the girls in titans would be absolutely wonderful i'd be i'd be down with that because I just, the fact that she's just so, like, I, not that I'm saying it's ever right to do something, but like if she was taking this much glee in doing this to somebody who was calloused or who had done a bunch of terrible things, like, heck, I'd even feel a little less sorry for Dick if she was doing this to Dick. But Gar, she can't not see that Gar is like the softest, kindest, just most open person. For her to just be trampling on this genuine kid, you gotta be some kind of evil. You gotta be some kind of real twisted to take pleasure in that. And she is, that's the whole thing. It's not even like she's begrudgingly doing this. This is pleasure. She's enjoying watching him just do these horrible things under her command. She actually called him a pet. Like she's twisted. And of course, if you're gonna work for Les Lux Luther, you can't be all that right in the head. And I noticed someone in the comments mentioned that apparently she's Lex's side chick. I did not assume, I didn't know that first and foremost. I've, I've mentioned many times, I'm not very familiar with the DC catalog and the characters. So I did not know who she was and I had no idea what her relationship was to Lex. I didn't assume a sexual relationship simply because we saw that episode earlier where she looks like she's in a relationship with a woman. But yeah, I had no idea, but yeah, it makes sense. If she feels any type of attraction to a man as absolutely filthy as Lex Luthor, then yeah, she would be capable of doing all the things we're seeing. But regardless, I just really can't wait for her to get her just desserts. I really wouldn't be mad if Gar was the one to kill her, but I don't want that on Gar. The only reason I don't want Gar to do it, even though it's satisfying as it would feel on one level, he's already killed a torturer before. And we saw the effect it's had on him. And we haven't even gotten a chance for him to even fully unpack that. So if he did that twice, like, I don't want to think about what that would do. I just don't want it to be on Gar's conscience. That's the only reason I don't want to do it. <sighs> All right, away from Gar. Actually, no, let's just finish talking about Gar because Gar was kind of the smallest segment of this episode. We see now that this is a whole program thanks to that doctor with loose lips. Well, he didn't really have loose lips thanks to the 
lasso of justice or truth. We now know that this is part of a program. He knows at least what's happened to Gar so far. The fact that now Mercy knows, unfortunately, as we saw, this is kind of bad. My guess is when she said phase two, my guess is that she's going to send Gar out there. That's the only thing I can think of is that she's just going to set Gar loose and basically let him do as much possible damage as possible. And then ooh, when you wildly gesticulate, <laughs> I guess, yeah, she's going to let Gar go into the public and just do as much mayhem before either the cops or the Titans take him down. Basically, it will take attention away from Cadmus because as we see, we've, they've already spun the news to make it seem like this is the Titans doing and that Cadmus is the one trying to help. So obviously, they've already made it look like... My guess is that it's going to go crazy. And then if the Titans try to come and get Gar, they're going to make it... Spin, they're going to spin it, pardon me, to make it look like the Titans are trying to take him back so that they can keep him to do more mayhem and Cadmus or the white knights on their horses coming in to take him in and restrain him and keep him out of the public, right? Like basically giving themselves license to keep Gar and actually get law enforcement to reinforce them keeping Gar captive, which is really smart and something I would expect of someone who works for Lex Luthor. So I'm not sure how this is going to go. My guess is that we're not going to get Gar back this season. I think we're going to Gar's capture or at least Gar's involvement with Cadmus is going to continue at least into next season. I don't think we're going to see Connor either in the finale. This is just my guesses, just because right now there's really no place to put him in this scenario. He doesn't have enough of a relevant point in the plot at this point for him to come out in the finale. So I'm fine if I don't see him tomorrow. I can definitely see him coming back into season three when we'll have more time to really dedicate to all the work it's going to take to t teach him to be a person who can live in the world as a super powered person who's technically only been exposed to the world for like a few weeks. On to <laughs> the really other short moment, which was cute, but really cute with Corey and Rachel. I really like when those two are together. I think that I've said it many times before that I think that Anna and Tegan have a really good chemistry. I love the scenes that they have together. And it's been a minute since we've had just Rachel and Corey time. We pretty much haven't had a scene like that since Corey rescued her from the nuclear family in season one. And I kind of miss it because those two used to have like those really cool like road trip moments and where they would bond and just have that really good feedback. And we kind of had that in this episode, obviously super abbreviated. As I mentioned before, this whole episode felt a little rushed. <laughs> that fight was actually kind of cute between the two of them. They totally fight like siblings, which I thought was adorable. But I love that at least Corey is kind of talking to someone, right? Since she doesn't really have, the only other person in the, in the Titans that she's really that close to is Dick. And he's not there and he's clearly very, very distracted at the moment with trying to get Jericho saved. So she needed someone to kind of vent the fact that she's in a lot of pain right now. And as far as her powers, we saw there, um, again, the reminder last episode, she was having trouble getting her fire going in the prison. And once again, it looks like she's blocked. At first, I thought she was empty because in the prison, obviously, it's dark. It was at night. So I thought maybe she was depleted. But it was daytime when she was trying again and nothing was happening. So I think it's a, a mental block. I think it's emotional. And she said to Rachel that she feels very powerless right now, that she thought all the things that used to make her somebody are no longer there. And that kind of just continues into what we saw last episode with her telling her, her um, psychology booty call that she had all these things that she defined herself by before she lost her memory and had this whole episode on Earth. But now she no longer has those things and she's not sure who she is anymore. So very much kind of like what Dick was going through a lot in season one, going into season two of Corey trying to figure out who she really wants to be. Like now that she potentially the moment can't be the queen of Tamaran, even though she was kind of questioning whether or not she even wanted it in the first place. Now that it's been pulled away from her and she doesn't have that option anymore, at least she doesn't see how she has that option anymore. She's really questioning who she is and what that means going forward. And she really is very strong stranded when you think about it because yes it's true that she's got her new family and the titans here on earth but it still isn't the same as what she's always known and also potentially losing the option of ever going back to her home so it's a very real and justified sense of loss that she's feeling right now so her lashing out at rachel seems completely natural i mean she's lashing out at everyone a little right she melted a bell over some donuts right Corey is not okay but I'm glad she finally kind of let some tears out. You know, she can grieve, grieve um, Fadai's death, grieve the fact that her parents are gone. That's a huge loss that she's trying to drink and have sex away. So I'm glad that she at least let some of that emotion out with Rachel. And, you know, and I'm glad also, I love that they didn't keep some weird 
fight thing going on between her and Rachel. I'm glad that they squashed it immediately. So I feel like she's at least talking to someone is my point on all this and I'm hoping that she'll continue to kind of talk about her feelings and deal with how she's feeling so that she can actually get herself back on some kind of level and that of course I think will channel her powers to coming back in full force. So this kind of brings me to the whole Deathstroke thing once again. We saw now finally the confirmation of what we have been suspecting and everyone's been kind of hinting at which is that Jericho did indeed jump into his dad before his body died and he has been trapped there for five years and it's not been blissful and he is not happy about it my gosh the way they depicted him inside of his dad's head was just so heartbreaking he's battered he's just he looks bitter he looks angry and that's so different from the Jericho that we saw in that flashback which is so much more sad and it looks like he can't leave and I don't know as I said before I don't know if this is because of Slade we saw that weird fuzzy door that he kept trying to bang against so I don't know if that's Slade who's maintaining that or if it's just because Jericho has nowhere else to jump into but my guess is that up to five years he's probably tried to body jump again like maybe he tried to go to his mother or something but I could see Slade keeping him there just because he's so angry at the fact that Jericho sacrificed himself like I think he's still genuinely pissed that Jericho sacrificed himself to save Dick and he just in that the fact that Jericho was like I know you're a monster I know you're a terrible person and like you'll never convince me otherwise so I feel like this is Slade's way of punishing him for not just accepting him and being happy about the fact that he's a psychotic murderer you know what I mean so it's twisted and it's sad and it, but again it just shows how completely stripped of humanity that Slade is like I, when I saw the Jericho episode a part of me was like well maybe there's still some humanity in him when it comes to his kid but it really wasn't there whoever I feel like that was just a vestige of who he was before the experiments but whoever Slade was died the second that those powers came to be and now he's literally torturing his son in his own body but I, it's interesting to see that despite the fact that he can I get I'm assuming these are all assumptions the fact despite the fact that he can keep Jericho in there Jericho does seem to have some semblance of control over him so I, I said a couple of videos ago that I felt like Jericho potentially is able to stay there because of his father's abilities but the fact that his father has those abilities is probably what keeps Jericho from being able to fully take over Slade's body like he's able to kind of be like resistant to it. So it's interesting to see this constant battle that's been going on. It looks like when Jericho really, really wills something, he can kind of make it happen, but he's not 100% there. And that could probably be because, like, even though when we saw him trying to walk his dad in front of a truck, which I was like, okay, Jericho, I see you. Deep down, I don't think Jericho really wants to kill this man. That's probably why Slade was able to pull that back at the last minute. But yeah, I don't know how we're going to get Jericho out. I don't know if there's a way to do it. Maybe Wade has to be so weak from being beaten down that he'll lose the the strength to hold. Because I feel like it must be taking a lot of Wade's strength, to, or Slade, sorry. It must be taking a lot of Slade's strength to keep Jericho in from jumping. So I feel like if Team Titans can get Slade beaten down to the point where he has to use more of his energy to keep himself alive or to heal himself than he can to hold on to Jericho that he might just leave enough of a window for that weird fuzzy box that Jericho is trying to jump through to finally dissipate and Jericho can leave. Where Jericho will go is the question. I don't know if I really want him jumping into another Titan, but that's the question I said in the last episode. I don't know what will happen if he leaves his father. But at this point, even if he goes into the ether, it's got to be better than being trapped inside of the body of a psychopath who's probably going to live unnaturally long. Which kind of brings me to Dick, finally, the fact that he went back and seeing that Jericho's mom is now all Team Dick now because she wants her son back. Like, this woman, this woman is sending men to go get her child back. Like, maybe you, like, if, he, if Slade trusted you enough to chill in your house, girl, wait till the man's asleep and cut his head off. Like, come on. I feel like you need to just do some things your damn self, girl. But anyways, she clearly wants Dick to, Dick's help now because she recognizes that Jericho is trapped in there and that Slade ain't letting him out. I don't know whether or not she's, oh no, she did refer to them as they, so she must know. Slade must know that she knows. Now that Dick knows the situation and has that confirmation, I love that we got to see where he got his suit made and obviously the new Nightwing outfit now exists. We're gonna see probably the next episode, the first full immersion of, or immersion, emergence 
of the new Nightwing. I don't know if he's actually going to give himself the name at that point, but it was exciting to see that the new costume is now here, but she's clearly not allowed to burn. I would not be surprised if they make sure this one is flame retardant. And again, I don't know if he's going to be going straight up against Deathstroke or if he's planning on going to get Gar, but he doesn't know about Gar. So yeah, it's got to be Deathstroke. Which then brings me finally to what we saw with Hank, aka Fohawk. Yeah, not much to say there, honestly. It was pretty straightforward. We kind of all guessed it. Hank has been on them drugs since he broke up with Dawn. He's been having a pity party, it looks like, for a long time. And he's gone into fighting because even though he sat there and gave Dawn a, a, Dawn a huge lecture on this cycle of violence that they're in, the first thing he does is go and start fighting again. Like, yeah, both of those guys have a lot of issues. Both him and Dawn need to kind of turn the mirror on themselves a bit about the things they love to judge each other about. Because yes, as much as he loved to yell at Dawn for loving violence too much, this kid couldn't stay away for two hours. So anyway, it was interesting, however, to see that it's been pretty bad. Like the whole situation with that kid who stole his suit, that took a turn I did not expect, actually. It was really kind of sad for a minute. I almost felt like Hank was going to like take him in since, you know, him and Dawn have been doing the whole broken, taking in the broken wing uh, to take care of them, but I guess it's probably not a good thing for him to do right after they lost the other kid by accident. But anyway, I did not expect that kind of sad turn of the, why the kid, you know, did what he did in the suit. But I thought it was great, that turnaround where the kid was like, you know, you sold me this costume for $200. $200 bucks that that kid probably needed to pay rent to stay away from his abusive mommy boyfriend. Like, if Hank don't pay that boy back, if he do not pay that boy back, not only $200, but an extra $200 for his trouble, you punch the kid in the face when the boy legitimately took your suit, okay, fine. The punch was probably warranted in that he was committing crime in the suit, which is not cool. Though technically vigilanteism is a crime, so really potato potato. But anyway, I'm hoping that now when Hank had that realization that he literally is getting so high... <laughs> and just so obliterated that he doesn't remember doing these things that Sober Hank would never ever consider that he's recognizing he's going to a place now that he doesn't want to go. We didn't see him throw the drugs away yet, but I'm hoping that he'll figure out that he needs the Titans. Having a purpose definitely seemed to help him on his sobriety in the past, so maybe if he can take that purpose away from his relationship with Dawn, because those two things should not be intertwined, but having a purpose of helping people, whether it be through the Titans or through his vigilanteism, that isn't a bad thing to help him at least have some direction. But overall, with sobriety, it should be for himself. Jeez, at least if he sobers up, he'll be at least be able to have a decent one night stand. Because that poor girl, mm, I don't really know where we're going to go in the finale at this point. As I said before, we got two things happening. We got Deathstroke waiting for them. Plus, we've got these girls who want to go after Gar. I don't know if we're going to have two separate groups going in two separate directions for the finale. Or if we're going to try to build one set of issues before the other. But I just feel like one episode is not enough to wrap it all up. So I feel like one of those storylines is not going to get wrapped up this season or potentially both, which is, in my opinion, going to be a bit disappointing. But we're going to wait until we see the episode before I pass judgment, because like I said, I was wrong about this one. Maybe I'll be wrong about the finale as well. What did you guys think of the episode? What do you think the finale is going to entail? Do you think one of the storylines is going to be wrapped up? And if so, which one? Please let me know below. I love reading them comments and getting involved in that conversation with you. And if you like this video, guys, please click like. And if you want to see more from this geeky, Base, please click subscribe. Until next time, see ya!